Welcome to Wildly Capable with Kate, a podcast made for those looking to unleash their wildest capabilities. I'm your host, Kate DeRocher, a dating, relationship, and self-worth coach on a mission to help people build better relationships, starting with the one they have with themselves. In each episode, we'll dig deep, turn inwards, and embark on a transformative journey. Together, we'll break free from unhealthy patterns, rip through self-limiting beliefs, heal past wounds, and build unwavering self-worth, all to create healthier relationships as a result. Get ready to explore the wild, untapped potential within you. Are you ready to see just how wildly capable you are? Subscribe now and join us on this empowering adventure. Remember, your wildest capabilities await. If you ask me, cheating isn't just when you hook up with somebody while you're in a relationship. Hi everyone, welcome back to Wildly Capable with Kate. I'm your host, Kate DeRocher, and I'm a dating, relationship, self-worth, and heartbreak coach who's on a mission to help you learn how to build better relationships, starting with the relationship that you have with yourself. Today, I wanna talk about cheating and what really counts as cheating along with how to avoid it and why it even happens in the first place. And some of the things that I deem as cheating may shock you, so keep listening. But before we get to that, I want to let you all know about a women's retreat that I'm hosting this Labor Day weekend in Dripping Springs, Texas. From August 30th through September 2nd, myself and 10 other women are going to be getting together for a transformative weekend of healing and self-development. We're going to walk through what it means to be a wild woman, which is the idea that every woman was created with so much beauty and power within her, but either it was stifled or we were told it was wrong or we just don't know how to tap into it or use it for good. I'm gonna teach you how to do that. I'm gonna help you shed old patterns, heal old wounds, free yourself of self-limiting beliefs and step into the woman you were always created to be. From August 30th through September 2nd, The Wildly Capable Women's Retreat is going to take place in Dripping Springs, Texas, and it is going to be a transformative weekend of self-development and healing. On top of helping you step into your wild woman, we're also going to be going on a ton of amazing adventures and doing a bunch of incredible activities. We're going to go horseback riding. We're going to do yoga, a sound bath. We'll have a private farm-to-table chef making us our meals. We'll be doing paint therapy, contrast therapy. There's just going to be so many amazing things that we'll be doing together on this retreat. And you're going to walk away with it with not only new lifelong friendships, but a transformed character and heart. And I can't wait to come alongside you as you do it. So if you are interested, please head to my website, coachkaterosher.com, head to events. You can purchase a retreat there. And just by listening to this podcast, my thank you to you for listening in is a special 10% off code. So use code retreat on my website and you will get 10% off of the full price. And then I'll see you in Texas over Labor Day weekend. I can't wait to meet you. I can't wait to help you step into your wild woman. Welcome to the Wildly Capable Women's Retreat. It's going to be incredible. All right, you guys, now back to the topic of cheating. So with social media apps only continuing to grow to the point where some of them are even replacing search engines like Google and with new platforms like OnlyFans taking off within the past five to 10 years, there are just so many ways and opportunities and temptations for somebody to cheat. And I wanna talk about A, what cheating is, but B, the different types of cheating that exist. Because I think when you hear the word cheat or cheating, you automatically imagine somebody hooking up with somebody else while they're in a relationship. But in reality, cheating can look really different and there can be a lot of different forms of cheating. And on top of that, it really depends on the person, the circumstance and the relationship whether what happened was cheating or not. So for everybody, it looks a little bit different. There's a lot of gray area. So I want to break down some of the main ways that cheating can occur and some of the main things that I deem as cheating and then talk about them a little bit and hear you guys' perspective too. I think this is a really important topic to dive into because one fourth of all marriages experience infidelity at some point. That's a pretty high number, one in four. And if you do not understand what that boundary is, what that line is, what counts as cheating, and how to avoid it, and how to protect your relationship and marriage from it, 
then it is much more likely that you or your partner are going to give into temptation. So let's be honest about it. Let's talk about it. Let's break down what cheating is, what it looks like, the different forms and how it can show up and what you can do to combat it. So to start, cheating is when a person in a monogamous relationship between two people has an emotional or sexual relationship with someone else outside of that relationship. That is the actual definition of cheating. And shockingly, I got that definition off of WebMD, which is really random, but I thought it was really interesting that even in that definition, it didn't just say that cheating is physical. It says that cheating can also be emotional. Emotional cheating is a term that I heard, I don't know, maybe six years ago, and it really validated a lot of my experiences in past relationships. Experiences where I would watch my ex-boyfriends go up and get a girl's phone number right in front of me and then actually text her. Or experiences where one of my exes would be really close with a girl, with a member of the opposite gender, to the point where I felt like they were closer than I was with him. Or experiences where my boyfriend would go out with a girl or get dinner with a girl or just do things that maybe weren't actually cheating, but they had the same sorts of effects on me. They made me feel nervous and anxious and forced me to compare myself to the other girl and feel threatened by the other girl when I don't want to feel that at all, when that is not even in my heart or my character to begin with. But because there were different things happening that made me feel as though my partner was being unfaithful, it brought out a lot of fears and wounds and worries within me. So were those things cheating? Were they not? I don't know. We're going to break that down a little bit further. But I do know that emotional cheating is just as real as physical cheating. So let's get into all of that right now. Now that I'm a little bit older and wiser, I know that cheating can happen in so many more ways than just sleeping with somebody else, sleeping with somebody who isn't your partner. And I also understand that even just allowing the temptation to be unfaithful into your relationship, into your space at all, while it may not be cheating yet, it is still completely unacceptable. In a relationship, in a monogamous relationship, you and your partner are a unit, you're a team. And anything that can threaten that unit is something that should not be allowed into your space, into your life, into your relationship at all. Because like I talked about earlier, temptation is everywhere nowadays. You can just be scrolling Instagram or TikTok. Heck, you can even be on LinkedIn and you can see somebody attractive and thoughts of, oh, wow, this person is really attractive or, oh, I would like their attention or maybe I should just, you know, send them a like. That can come up really easily because it's in our faces all of the time. So in order to protect our relationships, to keep them a unit, we have to avoid all temptation. And with temptation being so prevalent, it means that there are more opportunities for cheating and opportunities that may not look as black and white as what we normally and easily deem as cheating, which is sleeping with or hooking up with somebody else. So what are the other methods of cheating? What are the other things that somebody in a relationship could deem as cheating? The first one, this is a topic that's up for debate by a lot of people, is flirting with other people while you're in a relationship. Are you being unfaithful if you flirt with somebody who is not your partner while you are in a closed romantic relationship? This is a question that so many shows have asked. It's one that friend groups debate. It's definitely one that couples fight over all of the time. It's definitely in the gray zone. It's in the gray area. To me, it's kind of a divided answer. I don't think that necessarily having some witty banter back and forth with somebody while you're passing them by at a bar is cheating. But I do think that if you have an unpure intention in your heart and could allow that little witty banner to turn into something more, then it teeters on being emotional cheating. If you meet somebody and you're out at a bar, you're in a relationship, maybe your girlfriends aren't, but you're flirting it up, you're having a good time, you know, it's a little debatable, but it definitely crosses the line when you get that person's number or when you make plans to see them outside of that occasion. That is where, in my opinion, it starts to cross a line, where it starts to become emotional cheating because your intention is no longer just to have fun with my girlfriends for a little bit. Your intention is now, oh, I'm kind of interested in this person. They have piqued my interest. I want to get to know them more. And that should not be happening in a romantic way at all when you're in a relationship. 
Yes, with friends, sure, totally. But if you have a draw or an attraction to that person, then no, that will lead you down a road of temptation that you need to avoid. So the first thing is flirting while you're in a relationship. Kind of an unclear answer, but those are my thoughts on it. The second idea or thing that people may see as cheating is messaging or DMing other people while you're in a relationship. With this, I think it goes back to what your intent and your motive is. If you are DMing or texting other girls or other men while you're in a relationship and your intent isn't just to be polite or to handle something professional, but your intent is to get to know them or to help them get to know you or show them how amazing you are, that's where it becomes more on the spectrum of cheating. And how you do this, how you text or message other people also determines if it's teetering on cheating or not. If you have to lie or hide that you are texting or talking to other people, it may not be cheating just yet, but it's much more likely that it will lead to actual cheating. That is much more likely to lead into a full-blown emotional connection with someone who is not your partner. And outside of your friends, you should not be having emotional connections with somebody of the opposite sex while you are in a relationship. Remember, when you're in a relationship, especially when you're married, specifically when you're married, that person becomes the number one person in your life. More so over than your parents, your siblings, your future children, your spouse has to come first. And if you let somebody else, a third party in, and you start to get to know them, and you start to form a bond with them and an emotional connection with them that goes beyond friendship, that counts as emotional cheating. And not only can it count as emotional cheating, but it can definitely lead you into the physical cheating side of things too. If you're texting all the time, if you're talking all the time, it's pretty inevitable that you're going to form feelings or get attached. And if that starts to happen, that's when you need to reel yourself back in. You need to check yourself and you need to see, okay, this is, this is not right of me. This is starting to be unfaithful of me. My partner doesn't even know that I'm doing this. I'm hiding this. So maybe I'm not cheating just yet but I am causing a break in trust in my relationship. And it, that is just as damaging to work through as cheating is. So when you are texting or DMing people of the opposite gender while you're in a relationship, people that you may be interested in, people that you're attracted to, really pay attention to not only the way that you do it, the actions that you're carrying out, but what your intent and your motive are too. Check yourself, check your heart. And if you find yourself doing it because you're interested in them or you're attracted to them, or you wanna like have a little bit of a connection with them, that's when you need to stop. That's when you are allowing temptation again into your relationship. Up next is what if you're really drunk and you kiss someone or you hook up with someone? In my eyes, that is cheating. In my opinion, alcohol is not an excuse anymore. Maybe when we were 20 to 25 and in college and we were all drinking and getting blackout drunk, that was not a good thing, but a lot of us were doing that. Maybe it's a little bit different then. You're not as wise or developed or mature or aware then. But when you're an adult, when you get out of college and you're fully formed or you're in your 30s, you know better. If doing that, if your partner doing that would hurt you, then that means it's not okay for you to do in return. Even if your partner would not be as affected by something as you would be, if you are affected by it, in my eyes, that's a no-go. So you have to ask yourself in these moments, is me just like being kind of playful and having fun and getting attention from men or other women, would that hurt me if my partner was doing that? If the answer is yes, then you need to stop doing it yourself too. So in my opinion, if you get drunk and you step out of bounds, alcohol is not an excuse anymore. You are too old, you're too mature, you're too wise for that. That's not a reason to justify doing something hurtful to your partner. So yes, if you get drunk and kiss someone, 100%, that is cheating in my eye. What about if you sleep in the same bed as somebody of the opposite gender? Again, if we're in college and you are getting blacked out drunk and you fall asleep on some guy's frat bed, it's not good for many reasons, but it is very different than sleeping in the bed with somebody when you are in a healthy romantic relationship when you're an adult. That is such an intimate experience. I mean, you are in your pajamas or less and you're sleeping and you're right next to each other, you're feeling each other's body heat. So many things can happen there. So much temptation can happen there. But if you ask me, 
maybe it's not cheating, but it is very close to being cheating. This could be something that in your relationship you're able to work through and forgive, but it would definitely sting the other person no matter what. Up next, what about lying about being in a relationship? I have heard so many stories about men who are out at bars and they meet a pretty girl and they're in a relationship, maybe even engaged or married. And when they meet that woman who is not their partner, they want their attention. They want to feel good. Maybe they even have more intentions than that. So they lie about being in a relationship. They say they're not when really they are. Maybe that's not cheating yet, but it not only again can so easily lead to cheating, but it is a breach in trust in your relationship no matter what. Even if it doesn't go beyond that, you are breaking trust with your partner. So in a way, it constitutes as emotional cheating and is absolutely unacceptable in a relationship. And ask yourself this, if you don't have the intention to do something wrong, then why lie anyway? If you're not going to cheat on your partner or if you don't want the attention and the affection of that other person, then why do you need to lie about being in a relationship in the first place? You would be excited to share that you're in a relationship and you would not feel as though you are missing out on, a, on an experience by saying that you are. And by saying that you are not, that counts as emotional cheating, if you ask me. What about one-on-one -on -one hangs with somebody of the opposite sex? So this one's tricky because I believe you should absolutely have friends. If you're a woman who are men or if you're a man who are women, you, you can have friends of the opposite gender, even when you're in a relationship. But there's kind of, each relationship is different, but you have to figure out what that fine line is. There's kind of a fine line over who is acceptable for you to do one-on-one -on -one hangs with and who it's not. For Bobby and I, we have an agreement. We have a boundary in our relationship where we won't go to one-on-one -on -one hangs with somebody of the opposite gender if we're attracted to them. The only time that that may be different is if it's like a work setting and it's a, you know, a colleague dinner or something like that. But if you are attracted to somebody or you have a friend in your past who you've been drawn to before, or maybe it's an ex or somebody you had a fling with, this one's going to be controversial, but I would say that that's unacceptable in a relationship. I would say it's not cheating, but again, it can open up the floodgates and let temptation in and cause a rift in your relationship. It can cause problems down the line in your relationship. And again, you and your partner are meant to be a unit. So anything that could cause hurt or pain or confusion or difficulties in your relationship, you need to protect that unit against. So that includes going to dinners or getting drinks or doing happy hours with members of the opposite sex when you're in a relationship, especially if you were attracted to them. And the last one is liking somebody of the opposite sex's photo or video or real whatever on social media. Is that cheating or is it not? No, it's not cheating. But just like with most of these, it can lead to cheating. What that does when you like, so say a man likes a woman's photo on Instagram that's not his girlfriend, especially if that photo is a more promiscuous photo, what that does is it signals to your significant other that you like what you see and that can in turn cause your, your partner to feel as though they are not good enough for you. So that is not a kind or healthy thing to do to your partner. And on top of that, it tells the other person and anybody else who sees your name under their photo, sees that you like their photo, that you like what you see and that maybe you're interested and that maybe you would go for it if you're not in a relationship. And again, that is not protecting the relationship. That is not keeping external temptations and forces from entering your relationship and messing with it. So it may not be cheating, but it could count as emotional cheating and it can definitely lead to real cheating down the line. So. Promiscuous photos on social media for me and for my partner, that's a boundary. We don't like other men or women's promiscuous photos in that way. We only like photos if it's cheering somebody on or celebrating life win or something like that. So there can be no room for misinterpretation or no temptation can be let into our relationship. So that's a really controversial one. I know people feel very differently over that one. I've had to have this talk with so many men who either I'm dating or that I am coaching and just help them understand that yes, you may not be actually physically cheating, but you are hurting your partner and you are signaling things to external people that could be taken the wrong way. Whether you mean it to be taken that way or not, that can be the outcome. And that causes problems in your relationship and prevents you from protecting your relationship as a unit that it is. 
So really bottom line, what I keep think it comes down to here is your intent, your motive, and what it could mean to your partner, how it could affect your partner. I think the best thing to do in these circumstances is to constantly ask yourself, would this hurt me? And if it would hurt me, I'm not going to do it to them. Constantly ask yourself, check yourself, check your heart. Am I interested in this person? Am I attracted to this person? If I wasn't with my partner, would I go for this person? If the answer to any of that is yes, you need to take a step back, create more space, not have that temptation come into your life. And it's just important to understand that while cheating often is seen as physically hooking up somebody, having sex with somebody, kissing somebody, it, cheating can also come in so many different forms. And it really depends on you, your partner, and your relationship for what you see to be cheating or not to be cheating. It's between you two to decide. So there needs to be conversations that you two are having so you both can understand one another and see where that line is. Understand how to not cross that line. Some people may be different than me and they may not care if their partner likes a girl's photos or their promiscuous photos especially. For me, that feels just icky and gross and disrespectful and it may not be cheating but I definitely don't want it in my relationship. So that's a conversation that I had to have with my partners, with Bobby, with all the men before him, because I had to set the boundary. I had to make that line clear. And then I had to work with my partner to see if that line works for them or not. And some of them that didn't work for. And then I knew that that man was not a match for me. For Bobby, he was able to understand completely where I was coming from and not see it as me controlling him or taking away his freedom because that is not my intention. My intention is to protect me and my relationship. And luckily, my fiance, Bobby, is able to agree with me on that and meet me in the middle there. So every relationship, every person is different. And you need to be having those conversations to see where each other's opinions and feelings lie in order to protect each other, in order to protect the unit that is your relationship, like I keep saying. So to avoid being cheated on, first and foremost, communicate what your needs and expectations are then create boundaries within your relationship. Set a very clear line on what does or does not work for you and your partner when it comes to faithfulness and infidelity and cheating. What to you counts as cheating? What to you do you not care about? Have those conversations and set the boundaries and stick to them. Something that Bobby and I did when we got back together after our breakup was we created what we call our relationship agreements. And in our relationship agreements, we outline both you know, more esoteric philosophical things that do and don't work for us and very physical evident things that do or do not work for us too. So it's things like, you know, I, I value having a clean home or I value hearing from my partner once a day at least, or I value um, my partner not going to one-on-one -on -one coffee dates or drink dates with somebody of the opposite sex that they're attracted to. Those were the sort of agreements that we came up with and that we still have today and that we stick to, to create a healthy, fair, safe, secure relationship. And those agreements may change over time. They may look different when we get married or when we have kids, there will probably be more, or we probably won't need some of the other ones, but we know, Bobby and I know very clearly what makes the other person feel safe and what creates trust in our relationship. And we stick to those things. So create your relationship agreements, create the boundaries within your relationship and make sure both of you are on the same page. Have those hard conversations, make sure you both understand completely before one of you can accidentally break a boundary or hurt the other person without even realizing that you're going to. Have those tough conversations, create boundaries, create agreements and stick to them. And last but not least, in order to avoid cheating or being cheated on, there needs to be radical honesty within your relationship. And this is a hard one because little white lies can be really easy to tell and they can be really tempting and they can seem as though they are not hurtful at all. But little white lies said over and over create big lies and big lies and little white lies, no matter how big or small they are, they create rifts within your relationship. And when trust starts to slip in a relationship, it can be hard to get back. It can be hard to feel safe and secure again. It can take a lot of work, even if it's just coming from a silly little lie. So overall in your relationship, just be honest always. 
be radically honest with yourself and with the other person. Say the things that maybe will hurt the other person. Say it with love, say it gently, of course, but say it anyway, because you are forming a relationship that is based on trust and respect and safety. Trust is a huge pillar in a relationship. And if you don't have it, then you're really going to struggle to form a fulfilling relationship, a lasting relationship. So communication, boundaries, agreements, and radical honesty need to be happening within your relationship if you want to create the most fulfilling and lasting romantic relationship you possibly can. Okay, everyone. So those are the things that I see people debate all of the time over whether they count as cheating or not. My opinion may be totally different than yours, and I want to hear what your opinion is. So if you agree or even if you disagree, leave a comment on this video. Go to my YouTube. Leave a comment there. Reach out to me on Instagram at Coach Kate Rocher. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know if I miss things. Let me know if you feel differently about things. Like I said, it is different for every single person in every single relationship. But as long as you are on the same page as your partner, these things can be worked through and avoided and you can protect the relationship first and foremost. Before I close, I just want to remind you all that I am hosting a women's retreat this Labor Day weekend in Dripping Springs, Texas called the Wildly Capable Women's Retreat. I have four spots left available in the retreat and I would love for one of them to go to you. It's going to be a powerful weekend of transformation and healing and growth. And you're going to walk away with some of your new best friends, your new accountability partners, your new number one cheerleaders who are going to cheer you on through this crazy journey of life and love. So if you are interested, head to my website, coachkatejarosher.com. Use code retreat for 10% off at checkout. And I will see you this Labor Day weekend in Dripping Springs. I am so excited to meet you. Thank you all for tuning in. I cannot wait to hear your thoughts on what really counts as cheating. Be sure to comment, subscribe, like this podcast, and tune in next week for even more here on Wildly Capable with Kate. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I'll see you soon.